Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings are Sirach 31, verses 8 through 11, and the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 35 through 40. Uh, before we get going, um, these are the readings that uh, kind of come up a lot in, in the church, and they are the readings for a confessor. And they're, they're very important, especially, I think, the Sirach one, because it gives us a blueprint of what it means to be a confessor. Um, if you've heard other Lexio on the goes, we've talked about what does it mean to be a confessor. In the middle of that word, you have fess, which means to kind of fess up. When you've done something in trouble, you fess up. Um, you confess, you tell. So with the Christian, uh, everyone that basically follows Christ, all the disciples of Christ, are what we call confessors because there's a, a twofold thing uh, that our twofold aspect that all confessors or Christians or disciples have and that is witness and testimony the witness is uh, that comes from or the Greek word for that is martyr and so witness is our call to holiness and the answer positively to that call that we will be a witness for Christ even if that means our death and witness is really more of just um, our, our whole life. And, and you can sense this in people, people that actually are living a sense of holiness. You can, um, this is something that you can actually see and even feel when you're around someone that this is a holy person. Um, people say that all the time. You know, he was such a holy man or such a holy woman. And so this, this even before we even get to words or, or maybe even actions, there's just a sense of holiness because the person has called that. So that's the witness, um, our commitment to Christ, to be a witness. And I think the world notices this, and especially those that oppose Christ and his church notice this, that notices this in people, and that's why they then persecute those people and even martyr them. And that's where we get that word, martyr, witness, the ultimate uh, witnessing for Christ would be our, our life, to give our life. And so then we put words to that witness, and that's what we call a testimony. And so the witness is really our, our call to holiness um, and, and living that out day in and day out um, in our life and even in our death if necessary. And then putting words to that witness would be our testimony, speaking that, telling people why we do what we do, telling people um, about our love for Jesus Christ. And being a witness and giving testimony is a part of our Christian life. Be ready to tell people um, why you do what you do, why you pray, why you believe, and, and why you live a certain way morally. And, and this is what a confessor does. So please read uh, Sirach um, 31, especially 8 through 11, and see that blueprint of what it means to be a witness and give testimony. We see this in uh, the saint that we'll focus on today, which is Saint Raymond Nanatus. Uh, Nanatus just means Natus means uh, like a born, like a nativity. So uh, this is a nickname given to him, Raymond Nanatus. Um, he actually it was unfortunate, but his mother died um, while giving while giving birth to him, and they were not able to get him out of the birth canal. So they actually had to do like an emergency c-section and so um, at that time those of course were not common and so they called him Raymond the non-born because he wasn't born um, the, the, the typical way that people are born uh, and so that's where he gets his name Saint Raymond Nanatus. Um, one of the things it says in Sirach is that the disciple the confessor has done wonderful things in their life um, so this this charity this good works these good works Saint Raymond did this he did this from a very early age even as a child he um, practiced holiness and piety and in reverence and as he uh, eventually got older he had a great love for serving those the Christians that had been enslaved by the Mohammedans the Mohammedans are those uh, Muslims that of course they follow Muhammad and so they're called Mohammedans and they were enslaving Christians. And this was in the, um, in the, uh, tw around uh, the 1200s. And so St. Raymond uh, was part of a religious order that actually would um, capture uh, back and, um, and free those Christian slaves. 
and he showed wonderful works in his life by even giving his life over to rescue one of those Christian slaves. Um, and so it, part of being a confessor, a witness, and giving testimony to Christ is being willing to do wonderful things. And we do those wonderful things because we're inspired by the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel, we hear that another characteristic of a Christian, a confessor, is one that waits and watches for Christ. Um, through our baptism, we have given ourselves to Christ and Christ alone, and so we watch and we wait for His second coming. Jesus tells us that we don't know the, the hour, we, so we don't know when He's going to come back, and, and He could come back, Jesus says, in the second watch or in the third watch. Um, it's important to know, you know why, what does that mean, that, that Jesus could come back on the second or the third watch. Well, traditionally there were four watches, and this is during the time of uh, Jew, Jews and, and Romans used this term, and it was mainly coming from the Roman centurions who would keep watch at night. So they would have a three-hour shift in which they would keep watch. And so uh, hour one, or watch one, was really from the time the, the set the sun set, so let's say 6 p.m. to about 9 p.m. So watch 1, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second watch is from 9 p.m. to midnight, okay? And, and this is a time when they don't have street lights or, or restaurants and things aren't open. So this would have been a, a time when it's very dark and most people would have been sleeping. Uh, people wouldn't have been out and about like we do now after 9 o'clock. So 9 p.m. to midnight really would have been a time people were, were in their homes sleeping and not a lot of activity going on. The third watch is from midnight to 3. This is an hour that we traditionally think that no one is going to be out, right? Uh, this third watch. And then the fourth watch would be from um, around 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So really the times that Jesus is saying, the second watch and the third watch, so approxim approximately from 9 p.m. to 3, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. would be um, at that time culturally a time when most people would have been asleep, no one would have been working, it would have been extremely dark and quiet. And this is when Jesus says that, um, that, that he could come in the second or third watch. What do we mean this to say? Well, um, that spiritually we need to be ready at all times. Of course, we can't stay awake always. We do have to sleep. We do have to take care of our body. But we need to spiritually be on guard. We need to be vigilant at all times. This is what it means to keep vigil, right? To stay awake. Um, St. Peter tells us, he says, be sober and alert because your adversary, the devil, is roaring around, is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking to devour his souls. So resist him firm in your faith. So we are called to watch and wait. We are called to stay sober and alert, um, and, and we can't fall asleep spiritually. So although, yes, we are to sleep physically, we can never fall awake, uh, fall asleep spiritually speaking. Uh, this would mean that we need to pray daily, fast, we need to have spiritual reading, we need to be involved in the sacraments. We have to continue to be alive and awake spiritually um, and be ready to greet Him when He comes. Um, one of the prayers that we pray at night prayer is protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. As we're awake, protect us. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake and watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ and asleep rest in his peace. Um, a beautiful prayer that, again, says that when we're awake, we need to be watching and waiting for Jesus Christ, and we need his help to do this. Um, one of the things that monks and nuns actually literally do is they take uh, shifts even during these hours during the night, the first, the second, the third, and the fourth watch. So in the Benedictine tradition, they actually would be praying every three hours, and they would have at night even what's called nocturnes, um, and, and, uh, and pray at certain times during the night. Um, and this is to kind of show that readiness, that uh, my prayer and my readiness of Christ is even more important than my sleep. Now, we can't all do that, literally. We can't all wake up at, at those hours, um, maybe sleep for two and a half hours and then wake up and then go back for two and a half hours and then wake up. We can't do that. Some people can, and some people are called to that particular vocation. Um, but for most lay people, and even for, for most uh, parish priests, this is not possible. 
And so what we do instead is we, we sleep. Uh, maybe we give ourselves six to eight hours, I think is what's healthy. And, and we sleep so that we can rest and be faithful to our duties um, that we have been given by God. Um, but we don't oversleep. So if, if we know, for instance, if I know that I only need seven hours of sleep, I should not be regularly sleeping eight or nine hours if I know that I can fulfill my duties and be healthy by sleeping seven. So there is a sin called somnolence, and this is in the, the rule of St. Benedict. Um, he encourages his monks not to fall into somnolence, the sin of somnolence, which is sleepiness, sleeping too much, oversleeping. And when we sleep too much, um, then we are neglecting some of our duties of prayer, perhaps spiritual reading, or even duties that we have been called uh, to our family or to our friends. And so we can uh, be aware of the sin of somnolence, sleep for the amount of time that we need to, to be healthy and to fulfill our duties and guard against that. And spiritually speaking, always be awake and ask for Christ to guard us while we are sleeping so that awake we can keep watch with Christ and asleep we can rest in his peace. Thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Please take the time to visit linkedliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. And St. Raymond Nanatus, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.